Hello and welcome to this daily prayer and this week we are looking at the life of St. Freudswide. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Make me to know your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at the right hand in glory. The psalm appointed is the first part of Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you have healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life from among those that go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Before we hear of the life of St. Friedswide, we hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out. An unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. This is the word of the Lord. So I said earlier today we remember the life of St Frideswide and she is patron saint of the city of Oxford. Once upon a time in the fair city of Oxford there lived Princess Frideswide who was as good as she was beautiful. The king her father ruled the people of his realm with clemency and justice and she learnt the ways of the church. The motherless child was tenderly looked after by gentle nuns who taught her to read and write and to play sweet music upon the harp and the lyre. As she grew up, princes from neighbouring kingdoms sought her hand in marriage. The king, her father, turned them away, saying that his daughter was still but a child and too young to wed. In time, however, there came a handsome prince on a fine horse with his retinue all attired in splendid silks and velvets. And the king listened thoughtfully as he pleaded his suit. Princess Frideswide herself was alone in her room, high in the tower of the castle, but her ladies were listening at the door of the great council chamber. When they heard the king announce that Frideswide should indeed become the prince's bride, they hastened to tell her that she was soon to be married. The princess wept bitter tears, for her one wish was that she might become a nun and devote herself to God, and she vowed that even if she had to disobey her father, no mortal man should ever be her bridegroom. Then she gathered up some food, her missile and a few belongings, wrapped them in a warm cloak of fur. She slipped out with her ladies in the darkness of night through a small gate in the castle wall, and together they rode up the river until they came to a tiny hamlet. Hiding the boat among the reeds of the river bank, they concealed themselves in a byre, 
among the beasts stabled there, and thus they passed the hours until dawn. They shook with fear as they heard the stamping of many feet and the barking of dogs as the king's soldiers searched for them in the woods by the river. But the la at last the clamour of pursuit grew fainter, and they knew they were safe and could travel onwards. For days and weeks they journeyed until they happened upon a group of devout women who asked no questions and gladly gave them shelter. And there it was that Friedswide began to care for the poor and heal the sick. As time passed, word reached her that her father the king was pining away with sorrow for the loss of her, his only child, and she determined to return to Oxford, come what might. Hardly had she entered the gates of the city than the bells pealed joyously from the spires and steeples. The king rose from his sickbed and the people sang and danced in the streets. The news of her return soon came to the ears of the prince and he rode swiftly to Oxford to claim the princess once more for his bride. When she saw him, Friedweist prayed to God for succour. At once there was a terrible clap of thunder, and a bolt of lightning struck the prince, blinding him. Weeping from his sightless eyes, he pleaded for mercy and forgiveness. Friedswide took pity on him and prayed again, beseeching God to restore his sight, but to destroy his desire for her. And at once water gushed forth from a healing spring, and her prayers were answered. The prince's sight restored, mounted his charger, and wheeling around, galloped away from the city, never to return. Princess Friedswide's wish to become a nun was fulfilled, and close to the southern wall of Oxford she founded a great priory where monks and nuns praised God and cared for those stricken by misfortune, and where her name lived on for ever. So as we remember St Friedswide today and her great devotion to the Gospel of Christ Putting that first above all things, there's some interesting little facts that you may like to hear. St Margaret's Well in Oxford is said to be the healing spring where the waters came to restore the prince's sight. And the original house where monks and nuns lived and praised God and healed the unfortunate of the city of Oxford is thought to have been where Christchurch now stands. Christchurch, of course, a college of Oxford, and also the chapel at Christchurch is the cathedral of the Diocese of Oxford. So, someone who was kind and good and loved by the people of the city of Oxford and who served those who were poor and unfortunate, and she stooped from her noble birth to serve in the name of Christ. Amen. So Lord, as we bring together the thoughts and our contemplations upon the life of Friedswide, and we ask that you instill in us a sense of calling to serve our community, we bring before you those things that concern us. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon the Alfred Jaw benefice, upon all those who seek to serve you, to follow the way of your gospel. We pray for those at this time who feel unsure and feel lonely. We pray, Lord, for the discipline to put others before ourselves, especially in these times of uncertainty. And as we seek to follow the example given by Friedswide, we hear the collect for her feast day. Almighty God, by whose grace Friedswide kindled with the fire of your love, became a burning and shining light in the church. Inflame us with the same spirit of discipline and love, that we may ever walk before you as children of light, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. We also hear the prayer that our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <laughs>